And again, two important American institutions, the Oriental Institute, Chicago, and the University Museum of the University of Pennsylvania, or Philadelphia, uh, were active in the prehistoric investigation and research in different parts of Iran. Here are uh, the areas of uh, you know, American activities in Iran. So they, they gave up these large-scale excavations of monumental sites like Persopolis and Sarbeli. And uh, they concentrated more on small sites with um, you know, uh, various uh, questions. And as you know, um, uh, American archaeologists are all anthropologists. So they, uh, they would go to Iran with uh, questions like the beginning of our culture and uh, you know, uh, social mechanism and uh, questions like change, you know, um, center and periphery, etc. <coughs> this is the northwestern uh, zone of, uh, you know, where uh, the concentration of American teams uh, south of Lake Urmia, let's say in Iran and Azerbaijan. Another zone is Western Iran. Um, they came down later to Fars to explore Elamite and prehistoric sites, and then they uh, moved uh, eastwards um, to the uh, Kabir Lut and to the Afghan and Pakistani border um, with an important site named Tepe Yahya, excavated by a team from uh, the Peabody Museum in Harvard. The first investigation of Iranian um, Paleolithic remains um, took place in the 50s uh, with a man named uh, Carlton Kuhn on behalf of the University Museum uh, in Philadelphia between 1949 and 1951. Soundings at more than one cave yielded Mysterian or Middle Paleolithic remains, let's say Old Stone Age, and excavations at Belt and Hutu Caves, here's a picture of uh, the Hutu Cave, in the cliffs of the Caspian, uh, for sure, in Mazandaran, northern Iran, produced well stratified evidence for terminal Paleolithic early Holocene occupations, let's say uh, 12,000 years ago. Here's a picture of, of the Belt Cave um, in the 50s, and here is Carlton Kuhn. Uh, <coughs> this famous explorer of caves in Iran. Um, see here, Louis Dupree, uh, who became the, the director of, um, I think, uh, Afghan Antiquities Service in the 50s and later 60s. And the other man is the representative of the government, uh, archaeologist, um, and uh, one of the directors of the museum in Tehran, Mehdi Bahrami. Some finds from um, Carlton Kuhn's excavations in those caves. And um, another picture of Kuhn uh, and Louis Dupree uh, with this skull of this 12-year-old um, girl found in the Belt Cave and they reconstructed uh, this girl. In, I think the skull is still in the University Museum in Pennsylvania, I hope. And he published this um, sort of general book, but it's a very interesting book. It's like a novel. He was a writer, Kuhn, and he was a he was a former OSS uh, in uh, during World War II, and uh, he served in North Africa, in Algeria, etc. Uh, so he was he was a translator uh, for the army, and then uh, he became a writer. And uh, this book is, is very readable, I, I would recommend it. Uh, the Seven Caves is a report of his explorations in different caves from, uh, he moved from uh, northwestern Iran, um, actually eastern Anatolia, and then he ended up excavating a cave in Afghanistan. The other important work of uh, the American um, archaeologist was not, or is not today in Iran, but it's not far from Iran. It's uh, um, maybe uh, 50, uh, 50 kilometers um, 
to the west of Iranian border in Iraqi Kurdistan at this famous site named Shanidar. It was excavated by a team from the University of Michigan, directed by Ralph Soliki, over a period of nine years. The exploration of Shanidar Cave has resulted in one of the most significant archaeological finds of the 20th century. Soliki and his team uncovered skeletal remains belonging to nine Neanderthaloid individuals who lived there more than 40 years, 40,000 years ago. Sorry. Is a view of the region of the area of the Shandar Cave, now in Iraqi Kurdistan. There is the entrance to the cave. It's a, it's a very large cave. Um, The evidence produced by the excavation was that those people, uh, those Neanderthals of, of Shanidar, cared for uh, their um, aged, nursed their wounded, and buried their dead with flower ceremonies. Soliki then moved to um, northwestern Iran. And uh, he expected, he, uh, he was hoping to find something similar to what he had uh, found in Shanidar. Actually, he didn't find that, so the, the, his survey of northwestern Iran was, uh, was not a success in terms of scientific um, you know, uh, research and investigation, but uh, it, it became a memorable one uh, for both Ralph Soliki and uh, Actually, my father, uh, in one of his early field works in 1968, with a picture of, of, of the team uh, with Soleki and two, uh, actually his assistant and his student, and uh, the Iranian guard here, uh, taken in 1968. Um, and this is struck my, my father's memory. He, he told me a story about Soleki, and he said, oh, he, he's, uh, he's one of the most decent human beings I have ever seen, who was knowledgeable, decent, and kind. And um, uh, one day, um, my father had to argue with, uh, with his students over the handling of some fines. Uh, I don't know why. And the student uh, first ignored him, and then he said, oh, I don't care what you say, or something like that. And this was overheard by, uh, by Soleki, who came to the trench and uh, said to the student, um, uh, this man is not a, a team member, he's the co-director of the site, and you have to respect him uh, as you respect me. Um, many years uh, later, I found uh, Soliki and I got in touch with him, and I asked him if he has a photo of, of that uh, survey, and he sent me this photo last year. Um, he's still alive, living in New Jersey, and he must be more than 80, I think. So Shanidar was a unique uh, discovery. Uh, he trained a number of uh, prehistorians like uh, Philip Smith, who became a professor at the University of Montreal, but who excavated in Iran. Actually, Philip Smith excavated the, uh, the oldest village in the Near East, uh, going back to 8,000 years ago in Iran, Gamsdar, in the uh, area of Harsin, Western Iran. And he also excavated a number of French prehistorians who worked with him in the 50s at Shanidar. And he published his, uh, this popular book, Shanidar, the First Flower People. Another aspect of American uh, contribution, American contribution to the advancement of archaeology in Iran was educational. In the 1940, 1940s, let's say, the first group of students of archaeology graduated from the Department of Archaeology of the Faculty of Letters and Art at, uh, in Tehran, from the University of Tehran. And some of these uh, graduate students later studies, uh, studied at prestigious universities abroad. Uh, and the United States were also significant in that the first Iranian archaeologist 
trained abroad was in an American uh, university, the University of Chicago. 